Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. I hope that you guys are all having an amazing Friday. Um, I do apologize for the uh, delayed live stream, uh, live stream with the out the announcement uh, that I was going to go live one hour later. Uh, I thought I had the announcement all sent out, jumped in the shower, came back, and then I saw that everyone was not aware of kind of what was going on. So my apologies on that. I uh, really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy Friday uh, to tune on in. It looks like we have some uh, good movement going on right now with forward slash CL and with forward slash NG. So I hope for the next couple of minutes uh, that we spend together, it's something that you guys see, uh, you know, see a value. Uh, I'm gonna dedicate the later half of this video uh, to break down stocks that you guys see value in. Uh, but I'm gonna start sharing my screen just so you guys can see exactly what it is uh, that I see that is going on. So um, here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and try to have some fun and make some money. Um, so forward slash CL, uh, why is it that I'm paying attention to this? Uh, overall descending pattern. So I like to look for overall high points, overall low points. Uh, right now it looks a little bit on the overbought side. So again, I like to focus on three things, right? Three main things. Uh, forward slash CL, especially for like the past couple of days, has been selling off. So there's a very consistent like, um, especially, especially like the past two days, right? Um, it's been selling off very consistently. Um, so why is that important? Well, there's there's a consistency aspect there, and there you go. Um, it looks like it normally gets rejected around this middle VWAP, meaning that it doesn't normally do a very good job holding above this for a very long period of time, and then it aggressively sells off, and then it corrects itself, right? So why is that a value? Well, when this is overbought forward slash CL, then that means that DWT is a little bit more on the oversold side. Again, it doesn't mean that it has to play out according to plan by any means, and you always have to manage my risk. And yesterday is a perfect example on why it's so important to manage your risk at a much better uh, rate than I did yesterday. So forward slash CL. Forward slash CL, as of right now, we can see that it's definitely a little bit more on the overbought side with the RSI, with the MACD. It has an overall descending pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get some skin in the game, right? Some skin in the game for this uh, DWT position. So down, you look tired. Um, whoa, I, I, thought I, I thought I looked much better than I did. Um, I didn't think I looked that tired. My goodness. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go ahead and we can see here with the bid and the ask, this is where people are buying, this is where people are selling. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get this order ready, right? Um, and I'm gonna go right on over here and uh, this is $8 per share, so I can do about, um, if I'm not mistaken, 1,000 shares. Um, that's not gonna be very much, so I'm gonna do um, two, 2,000 shares and let's say we do that at 815, right? So that's gonna be about $16,000. That's honestly not too much either. Um, I like to get the, uh, in with about a 25, you know, a 25% position size. Uh, so I'll do I'll do 2,500 just to, you know, uh, we're getting in way before the confirmation. So I'll do 2,500. We'll set it there, 20,000, that's good. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so I set my limit order here. So what that means is I'm not buying at market price. I'm buying at the exact price point that I want to. Uh, with the TD Ameritrade platform, I can move this around depending on where it is that I want to get filled. So I'll exit that out um, and then we can kind of go from there. So a lot of people are talking about natural gas as of right now, so forward slash NG. Um, natural gas reversal, super aggressive sell off on forward slash NG, which caused a huge push up on ticker symbol DS. Um, so there, I just got filled on the left-hand side. You guys can see uh, that I got filled at 812 uh, for ticker symbol DWT. Uh, so just keep a close eye on this. Right now, it looks like DGAS is pulling back. Um, I just want to give you guys a, a very simple reminder. Um, for those that are trying to trade UGAS and forward slash NG, I think it can be used as a example. You guys don't have to accept it, um, but when you know, you're trying to buy the dip or trying to find the reversal of a descending pattern when it's had such a consistent pattern of selling off, um, the overall direction is not in your favor. So altogether, um, yes, it might be showing signs of a potential reversal as of right now, but look at the RSI, look at the MACD, and it makes sense on why this thing can't continue to sell off um, instead of it actually continuing to push up. So instead of waiting for this to try to push up and make a recovery on you guys, uh, I try to go with the flow and um, yesterday, you know, I, I bit the bullet when it came down to my position on UWT um, and having to cut losses on that specific position. 
so what I would do here, instead of trying to trade this descending pattern, I would wait for natural gas to become a little bit more overbought, wait for it to indicate signs of it peaking out, selling off, and then once it begins to sell off, Diaz, since it's been so consistently pushing up, I would think that that one would make a little bit more sense to pay attention to. Again, and it could go any way, uh, but as of right now, especially as, you know, for a lot of people that are just getting started, I feel when the overall direction is in your favor, ultimately it's much easier uh, for people to manage the risk that way. So uh, it looks like DWT is still um, selling out. So right now we are down 125. So. Got to make sure that I keep a close eye on this, 125 on DWT. Um, and again, we're in with 25% of a position size or 20%, uh, so one fifth of a position size. So forward slash L, big push up, yep. Um, we're approaching that middle VWAP area, right? So um, is there a breakout pattern? So a lot of people are, um, that might be asking like, well, Ricky, is this where you want to cut losses? Not just yet. Do you guys see, um, I want to ask you guys, do you guys see why I wouldn't cut losses just yet? Um, I talked about the pattern that I saw. I said that it was trading between the middle and bottom VWAP, right? It would sell off, it would try to push up, get close to the middle VWAP, even sometimes, you know, go above it, but ultimately then get rejected and continue to descend. So when it approaches the middle VWAP, normally it doesn't or isn't valued as a good deal. So that's, a, that's, that's the pattern that I see right now. If that pattern changes, then of course I can ultimately just cut my losses on ticker symbol DWT and then maybe pay attention to UWT if I see that much value in it. So uh, DGAS, $558 profit. Uh, congratulations. Congrats, Nico. So it will still go down. Uh, yeah, so the, I mean, it, it doesn't mean that um, you guys can't look for dip by opportunities, right? That, that's not what we're trying to say. It's like, um, just to be a little bit more clear on the direction. Just when something begins to identify, like forward slash NG right now, begins to identify a little bit of a potential reversal, don't be so quick to just go all in and think that it's just gonna shoot up, right? Like that's, that's I think very, um, what's the word that I'm trying to uh, find for it? Uh, that's just very hopeful, right? Um, as of right now, I would just make sure that, um, you know, you wait for a clear direction. That's one of the most important things that I try to focus on. So if something is showing signs of an uptrend, uh, then I try to focus on that, right? Because if something is increasing or growing in value and it's still a good deal, uh, then I can get into that, right? And then be able to sell it for a profit while the overall direction was in my favor. So um, just to go full in, yeah. Um, there's, there's multiple ways on how people can approach this. I just wanted to share my opinion on that. So here we go, so DWT is trying to push right back up. So we got forward slash CL, again, getting rejected around this general area. Uh, when am I going to add more to my position size on DWT? Well, wouldn't it make sense as this thing continues to sell off if it does? It doesn't mean that it has to, it doesn't mean that it's going to, but if forward slash CL begins to sell off and confirm the pattern that I saw, so it confirms almost this pattern that we saw here during pre-market hours, then wouldn't it make sense the more that, you know, forward slash CL sells off, the more that DWT pushes up, that if DWT is making me money, then I probably want to put in money into DWT a little bit more, right? So then I can add more to my position size on DWT once I have confirmation. And that's, again, one of the hardest parts because I need to make sure that I manage my risk in case it breaks its pattern or that I wait for confirmation to add more to my position size. And even after all that, even after all that waiting for confirmation or waiting to manage my risk, Sometimes even after confirmation, it could completely break its pattern and then pick back up and then I'm gonna really have to cut my losses. And those are the tough pills to swallow because you're like, what did I do wrong? It's not that you necessarily did anything wrong, it's that I think you did a good job by managing risk and staying true to that, but ultimately just the overall pattern and direction was not in your favor and there's always different factors and different catalysts that can drive the price up and that can drive the price down. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to remind you, so trust uh, LTC. Um, if you keep talking, I'll just remove you from the chat. It's that simple. It's one button, right? And you're poof, gone. So um, if, if you don't like what it is that I'm saying, then guess what? It's like super simple. You can, um, or you think that I'm talking too much because that's the statement that you said. Um, 
And, okay, so challenge me in anything. I'm calling you over here. I've never heard of that person, but okay. Yeah, so we, we, we'd love to have irrelevant people uh, spam the chats. Cool. Alrighty. Uh, Ricky, can you please make a video on the indicators you use? Um, yeah, um, I actually do have a video that I uploaded not that long ago, maybe about four weeks ago. So feel free to check that out. Um, and it's about like four indicators that not only I use, but um, a series of uh, other people that I have in that video. So. <laughs> oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Learned so much from Happy to have you here. Why do, yeah, so why do they come here if they're not interested in learning anything? I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, people just love to be counterproductive. So um, I, I can't explain those kind of people. It just doesn't make sense, right? Uh, but let's just ignore them. Uh, do you ever use uh, Bollinger Bands? Um, I used to. Um, it's just a, an indicator that I kind of like, you know, uh, ended up not using anymore as time went on. Um, it doesn't mean in any way that it's not a value or that you can't use it. There's a lot of people that use it. And if it's something that you you see when it comes down to your technical analysis and a series of other indicators uh, that you see a value, then 100%, uh, um, you know, test it out. I think that the number one thing for all those that are tuning in that maybe are not too familiar with, you know, me or are not too familiar with like, uh, if this is the first time that you've ever watched me trade live, first of all, welcome. Uh, but second of all, it's like, you know, my style and what it is that I do is not the only way to do it. And I'm, I'm very open about that. Even if you're part of Learn, Plan, Profit, I try to empower you to find your own style of trading. And I think that's really what differentiates us from a lot of other people. It's that, that we're not trying to teach you just one specific style is I try to focus on, you know, providing the foundation in which you can build off of. To become a self-sufficient trader i think that's the goal because we're all wired in different ways and we're all going to see values in different ways um and i think that's what's most important to understand so i have a general understanding of what it is that we're doing and how to do it and then from there based off of the niche that you focus on to be able to branch off to that um, and then kind of go in from there so do you guys see what's going on right now with forward slash cl do you guys see what's going on? So it was trading above, yeah, there we go. So DWT is pushing up, so it was showing signs of an uptrend, right? It began to consolidate, and now it's beginning. It's still not 100%, but now it's beginning to show signs of a potential descending pattern because it broke below this EMA line, which is this line right here. So again, if forward slash CL begins to sell off, that's good for my DWT position. It doesn't mean that it's going to continue to sell off it just means that it's good for that current position as of right now um uh what is the difference between the different styles i don't get it sorry um well uh, what is it what what is the difference between the different styles well it's just that they're it's not that i mean it just comes down to like uh let's let's talk about like you know maybe running right maybe i have a specific way to run as fast as i can uh, but someone else has a different strategy to try to run as fast as they can right it's it's still the same end goal of you know running as fast as you can so the same thing when it comes down to trading we still have the same end goal of making money in the market we just approach the market in a different way so we might have a different focus in momentum stocks in penny stocks right um i have a, i have a very huge focus on a lot of etfs right uh, we have a lot of people who might focus on momentum trading, swing trading, day trading, uh, and stuff like that. It's just just like, you know, uh, Apple Juice is saying right here. Um, it's personal preference. And the biggest thing that we want to make sure that we uh, preach to you is that there's not only one specific way on how to get this end goal. And I think that's what's important. So are you still bullish on Tesla? I, um, the Tesla video is picking up because so many people are searching for it. Uh, I stopped, I closed my position on Tesla when, uh, for a profit when Tesla was at 260 or two, um, like 264 or something like that. I have a video showing me closing the position. Um, I'm not holding Tesla anymore. And that was like a long time ago when they decided to close out that position. So here we go. Uh, we got DWT um, pushing up just a little bit. There we go. Forward slash CL selling off, meaning that we should be having a little bit of a push up. So up a very small dollar amount on DWT. 
Uh, let's check this out again on my second screen over here. Um, I do have my. Why is it doing that? Let's see. Yeah, I do have my um, forward slash ng uh, forward slash cl future right. So here we go. We're just about to break a hundred dollars again. Not too much, uh, but let's go ahead and just add a little bit more to our position size. Here we go. So um, that last one was how much? It was about uh, 2,500 shares. We're going to do uh, about twice the size, so 5,000 shares. Um, once we get a little bit more confirmation of an uptrend on DWT and a downtrend on forward slash CL. So. Uh, might be a stupid question if you buy on an uptrend um, If you buy an uptrend buy an after it breaks resistance um, How do you know when to sell it or just watch it uh, and wait for any signs? So First of all, that's not a dumb question. Um, that's a very common question So if you buy on an uptrend and uh, buy an after it breaks resistance So um, that would be in a sense be viewed as a breakout. Um, that's not a huge focus that I have uh, one of the biggest things that I like to focus on is to make sure that I'm getting something for a good deal. That's just my approach as in like, you know, I wait for an overall uptrend kind of like, uh, you know, DWT, right? So it's an overall uptrend. I wait for it to sell off a little bit, become viewed as a little bit of a better deal, buy it and then sell it as it becomes a little bit overbought as it continues that uptrend. So yours would be like, okay, well, it's back here at 835. Um, and you know, let's say it, let's say it continues, it pulls back and then pushes back above around eight three five, then um, you know, then that's when you decide to buy. So it's making higher highs, which makes sense. It's an approach that you can take. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. Um, I I just feel like with that one, um, you're just hoping that the momentum continues and that it continues to rally. So what indicators or you know what idea um, you know can you look at to have a better understanding of uh, here we go. One quick second. Uh, what understanding can you have to, um, or what can you look for uh, to understand when to sell? Uh, you can look at a series of different indicators. You can look at based off previous patterns. Or you can look at volume on when it begins to really slow down and the momentum really begins to no longer be there, right? Uh, I think ultimately that's something that I would keep a very close eye on. So I just sent you a Discord message on all green trades this week. Thank you again for such a good training and principle that you teach. Oh, Samuel, it's all your hard work paying off. Happy to have you as part of the team. So are the videos uploaded on LPP more detailed than your YouTube videos, beginner and slash newbie friendly? Uh, the course is completely beginner friendly um, and yes, the videos are more straight to the point. So um, my YouTube content is just that. It's a YouTube content. It's There's a lot of like talking, ums, bits, you know, and stuff like that. So um, and, and tangent on the LPP videos, it's just straight to what the topic is and then it moves on to the next section. So um, again, LPP is an option. It doesn't mean that you have to do it. Um, it's just, in my opinion, a little bit more efficient to get to the material and then to be able to, you know, watch me trade live and stuff like that. So when does the name of the platform, please? I don't understand why this is like such a common question. It's Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade. And yeah, you guys can search it up on Google, search it up on YouTube and stuff like that. But I, that has to be the most common question we always get. So how much money do you... Uh, need to start on TOS account. Is there a minimum? There's not a minimum. You can fund it a thousand dollars if you would like. Um, ultimately, before funding it or before, um, we'll, we'll get into that like concept a little bit later throughout this video. Um, I just wanted to trade for about twelve more minutes and then I'll close it out. Uh, but um, yeah, you can start paper trading. You can start with a thousand dollars. I believe if you begin with thirty five hundred dollars, they give you five hundred free trades with a promo code two twenty. But uh, there's a lot of different ways around it. So, uh, to an extent, I mean, long term higher highs, right? Um, uh, Jay Fizzle, that's a great question to have, especially with DK and ETFs. Um, you know, I don't focus on holding any of these overnight. I don't focus on doing anything other than just day trading, especially because the patterns haven't been that consistent. So, I just don't even. Um, 
pay enough attention to that. So uh, when it comes down to uh, you know the one day one minute chart and very relevant patterns, um, it's very easy for them to make higher highs and stuff like that. So. And again, sorry that if I'm skipping your question, again, I don't have anything against you. I'm just getting all these different questions that are coming about, um, and I might not just get to yours right away. So, um, yeah. Can you show your watch list? Um, this is the one that I'm, uh, that I'm watching right now. So, yeah. These are the series of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now. I like that. So uh, Michael said, I did paper trading off uh, on TD Ameritrade four months before uh, funding the account with a small amount on Robinhood. and figured I'd move to TD Ameritrade when I, okay, I like that. That's a really good plan. Here we go. So we just got filled at 816 on this uh, pullback. As of right now, uh, we might want to keep a close eye on this and see if Still pushing down. Ooh. And again, this is a perfect example with the, with the MACD and with the RSI. You can definitely see that um, it was a little bit more on the overextended side. I still thought that I had a decent amount of margin for it to continue to push up, so I wasn't too worried in that aspect. Uh, but it looks like right now, forward slash GL might be trying to change directions. So uh, I'm just going to keep a very close eye on this. And of course, this happened right after again i waited for the sell-off I, I waited for the dip by opportunity i originally bought here and then as it continued to show signs of an uptrend i decided to buy right uh but ultimately if it changes its overall direction or just you know begins to sell off then um, i'll just have to cut losses on dwt right so uh, we'll send an alert here Alrighty. I sold right at the middle of you up. Super happy to hear that. I like that. Congratulations. Just to make sure that we, um, in case I'm breaking down stocks for people, um, and it you know doesn't go according to plan, that I don't have to manage my risk myself. I just set a stop loss just so it automates that process. Here we go. Pushing up. And again, just because you get stopped out, um, I guess it depends if you're under the PDT rule or not. Um, it looks like it's pushing up. It looks like it's pushing up pretty nice. Um, again, just if I end up getting stopped out, um, I'm just managing my risk. It doesn't mean that I can't get back in. Um, and it looks like I'm about to get stop lost out. So here we go. So we got the, there we go. So looks like it ended up making lower lows ended up having to cut losses, and if it begins to drastically sell off, then um, that's the whole point of cutting losses. Again, I can wait for maybe when it picks up and builds a nicer margin, so that probably definitely wasn't nice. That was 650. So definitely a tough pill to swallow when it comes down to trading, but if you think about it, and with that overall position size, um, that was about 1% that I think that it ended up selling off, and that was due to the overall um, average up right so i ended up averaging up my initial position was uh pretty good it was right around 812 um and it looks like it's already starting to pick up so yeah uh francesca i am live right now Okay, sounds good, Bryce. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Looks like it might be picking up already. Let's see. Yeah, 
already picking up. So that's that's the annoying part from time to time that um, My TD Ameritrade on this side is really messing up. Here we go. So one to get filled, DWT broke back above. Um, right now, one of the things that I saw is that DWT uh, or forward slash CL was getting rejected at that middle VWAP. Um, so that's what I'm seeing on my overall future, right over here on the right hand side on my second screen. And since it got rejected and now it's beginning to make lower lows, this is the third red candle, so I can show you guys that how that looks right on over here. Forward slash CL, again, rejected at the middle VWAP. I definitely could have done a better job uh, managing my risk. It probably should have cut losses if there was a break of pattern. Again, ultimately, I just got back in, so um, I missed out on about, what is that? If I cut losses at six and then got back in at around 13, yeah, that's a decent amount, uh, but that was my mistake, so um, could have done a better job with that. I ended up cutting losses, I think, a little bit too early on that one. But just, again, I just averaged up. So I probably either should have cut losses much sooner or been a little bit more laid back with my stop loss. So um, area for improvement, right? And that's something that we could always refine as time goes on. But ultimately, again, it's still a descending pattern. It's still staying true to the direction. Uh, so now we just need to wait uh, for lower lows and kind of go with the flow. So... There we go. Uh, we just showed it. So I showed it when I was in the position. So uh, John, if that's so much of a concern, when I cut losses on that one, it was a $650 loss, but then I got back in and now it's pushing up. So appreciate your concern. Um, I don't short, so I'm yeah, going long, Charlie. There we go. Let's see if we can make lower lows. There's no minimum deposit, bud. What is going on, Russell? Woo -woo. What's up, what's up, what's up? So here we go, DWT. So we can go ahead and check this out. So right now I'm up 360 on the open. So now I'm up 400 on the open, uh, but still 260, uh, about $200 down on the day. So um, again, makes sense, right? So I'm going to wait for this thing to break above this general area. Let's see. Uh, can I go on a payment plan for LPP? Um, I, we don't offer any payment plan, Eric. Um, I appreciate the offer, but it's just not something that we do. How long do you normally trade for in the morning? Uh, 30 minutes normally. So minimum of 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, an hour and a half, depending on how active it is. So um, how are you choosing a specific price? Um, I'm determining it based off of um, the like how forward slash CL is trading. So if I see, there we go. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting for there to be like, you know, a break of resistance. And if it continues to push up and indicate signs of an uptrend, uh, then I'll get in and continue to add more to my position size. So, uh, thanks for everything, Ricky. Learning uh, heaps up. Oh, super happy to hear that. That's why we host these, right? So these uh, free live trading sessions um, for the general public. Again, it's something that we exclusively only offer for LPP. 
but once a month i love seeing like the feedback that we get from people that get to tune in live regardless of you know i make a profit or i take a loss i feel like there's always something to take away from these videos um and correct me if i'm wrong but you know there could be a perfect course out there right and regardless how perfect that course is it's very difficult to take in that information and try to implement it without making any mistakes so being able to go through a course and then being able to like refer back to these type of videos live every single day and ask your questions and be able to see real world examples of people making profits but also making mistakes um, yesterday is a perfect example uh, during the live trading session if I'm not mistaken during yesterday's live stream um, it played out pretty well um, I, I took a couple of trades did well cut losses on some did well on the others um, ultimately uh, 3.7 K yesterday um, and we've been we've been having a lot of fun so I think that's what's most important so we've been having fun making money um, and spending time with people that we value. So um, if you guys don't like my videos on YouTube, then you probably won't like the course. Um, I mean, is this way to, for me to put it right? Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a fun experience, right? It's, it's definitely not bad. So here we go, we should be green altogether. So I'm up 690 on the open, $40 on the day. Again, that's due to my um, now I'm up six, eight, ten on the open. So this is going to be about a $1,000 profit trade. But again, I took a $650 loss on the last trade. So I'm going to have to take that into consideration. So right now forward slash CL, uh, let me go ahead and show you this real quick. Forward slash CL is still showing signs of a sell off with no indication of an overall reversal. So again, the more that forward slash CL sells off, the more money that um, I can make on ticker symbol DWT. So I can ch uh, choose to lock in profits on DWT around this general area, or I can choose to give it a little bit more time. So it's jet, uh, do you guys see this? Do you see like the MACD where it approached it last time? So we're approaching a general support area based off previous patterns. Um, one of the things that we like to empower our traders is to lock in profits and at any sign of a resistance, again, you're, you know, if you're a beginner trader, um, your intentions and your focus should not be to make a profit. It should be, you know, when you're learning how to trade, it should be to learn, right? Uh, so don't try to maximize profits, especially as you're a beginner trader, because, you know, you're going to make mistakes and you can discourage yourself to ever trade again. And that's, that's the part that like we definitely want to avoid, right? We don't, we want to make sure that you don't make simple little mistakes right now that will discourage you to never trade in the stock market again. Uh, so here we go. Uh, we're still pushing up on ticker symbol DWT. Uh, I'm going to get ready to close out my position on this. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, so we're approaching a general. I'm just going to um, close it out here. Uh, this is my preference. This is not something that you have to do, but I'm just going to close it out. So I got filled at 822, locked it in. Uh, we're seeing some sign of a resistance around this general area um, and that trade was about $690 um, so altogether um, literally didn't make much $40 but again um, so $40 is what I made profit on the day I took $650 loss I made back $690 difference is a $40 net profit um, so uh, that's why it's so important to manage your risk always know that you can come back why did I lock in profits at that area? Because again, if I'm trying to maximize my profits, you know, that's based off of my goals, my hopes and my desires, which are completely irrelevant to the market. I saw signs of a resistance. I saw, you know, with the RSI, with the MACD, what we pointed out with the forward slash CL, that it made sense why to lock in profits. And I could always lock it in, wait for it to sell off, get back in for a better deal and then make more money. Again, we have nothing but time. You have, you have nothing but time to wait for that perfect trade or as close to perfect as it can get uh, for you to make that money. So honestly, your videos helped me out so much. Much love, Zan. Super happy to hear that, Carlos. Appreciate it. So uh, put a tight stop loss. Again, it's it's not as simple as that, right? Because then you'll cut losses um, quickly if there's any sort of a pullback or anything like that. So uh, there's a you know there's some form of like risk management that you always want to have in mind. You want to make sure that you do your part in getting in something uh, or getting in for a good deal. Uh, but then also doing your part that if it begins to break its pattern, that you cut losses and, and keep it that, that way. So, Ricky, uh, do you show trading options in LPP? Not at all. I don't trade options on YouTube. Don't trade options in LPP. So, um, again, it's 
you know, whatever you see on YouTube, when it comes down to like what I focus on, you guys can make assumptions based off of what you will experience in LPP. Uh, what do you think about Trump's tweet? Um, I have no opinion on that. That's not something that has relevance to do with what I'm trading. Ricky, how do you choose the stocks that you are trading? I have a huge focus on three things. Uh, we talked about the overall pattern. I like to focus on ascending uptrend patterns. That's why, you know, DWT has been pushing up, forward slash yell has been trending down. So there's a correlation there, right? I like the direction, making sure that I invest in patterns or in, in something that's increasing in value. So again, if I want to grow my account, simple thing, invest in patterns that are showing signs of growth, right? Um, and then the last thing is I want to make sure that the margin of profit is worth it. So uh, making sure that it's worth my time and worth the effort. So do you ever do meetups with your LPP group? Uh, no, not as of right now, but um, we plan on opening a physical location for TechBud uh, HQ, right? And our Learn Time Profit members will have free access to that facility. So um, yeah, uh, it's going to be like a place where you can dock up your computers, be able to trade with other people in that area and just like this kind of like incubator type of environment. Um, and of course, it's going to be free for our LPP members. So uh, how long would you recommend paper trading? That's a very open ended question. It's like, how long do you need to practice to swim? Well, until you learn how to swim, right? Um, it's like, how long do you need to practice paper trading until you learn how to trade? So when can you make the fluid transition? What's the whole premise of you paper trading? Not just because you don't have money, right? Or not just because you want to, but it's because it could be either one of those factors, but ultimately it's to learn how to trade and minimize in the monetary aspect, how much money you lose, right? So when do you begin and stop paper trading? when you consistently prove to yourself that you can grow the account. It's it's super simple. So ask yourself the whatever question you're going to ask me or that's super open ended just backwards. So East Coast HQ for LPP, um, not as of right now. Uh, we have a big focus on just opening and, and working here in Arizona. Uh, so that's going to be our main focus as of right now. So Ricky, what's the forward slash full name? I can't seem to find that in my platform. Uh, you might not be able to just because, again, it's forward slash sale is a future. So it's light, sweet, crude oil future ETH. Four hundred and three on the day. Paper trading using twenty five k. I like that. It's continuously stay green. So, uh, hey, how can I get real time paper trading data if live trading data is not supported in my country? Call whatever brokerage it is that you're using. I'm, I'm again. I don't use your brokerage. Uh, it's a very simple solution. Just reach out to whatever brokerage it is that you're using and try to see if you can find a solution for it. Uh, so again, this is a little bit more on the overbought side, not so much of a good deal. Can it continue to uptrend? Of course, anything can happen, right? Can it continue to uptrend? Yes, but again, it's a little bit more on the overbought side. So it makes sense on why we can wait for a little bit of a pullback and then wait for that margin of profit to build and then we can wait to get back in, right? So um, uh, will the new LPP course focus more on day trading? Uh, the, yeah, so the update does have a huge focus a little bit more on my current style of trading. Um, and that's something that I'll update you guys on uh, now that we have the different components, um, you know, pretty much ready. We just have to put them together now. So what is your opinion on Forex? I don't have an opinion. I don't trade it. Does it really matter if your paper trading is delayed 20 minutes? I mean, um, to an extent, it's just preference, right? So it might matter for some people, it might not for others. Here we go. So forward slash NG, right back at the support, meaning that D gas, right? Should be right back at its resistance. There we go, about to make higher highs for the day. So what does that mean, guys? So what does that mean? Forward slash NG, back at support, D gas pushing right back up. Again, this is a perfect example of why you don't try to find the peak. Remember those that were saying like, oh, natural gas reversal, all that stuff. Again, don't be like everyone else. When everyone else is trying to say that, oh, pay attention to this, invest in this, 
you know, even, regardless of who it is, me, other people, it's like if it does not make sense to you or you're not 100% and confident with that trade, simply don't do it. It's your hard earned money that you're trading with, and ultimately that's what's most important. Um, if you don't feel like you're ready to trade and people are encouraging to trade, then guess what? Go back to the books, dedicate a little bit more time to learn, and until you build that confidence, until you you know have practice and built that experience, then maybe you can begin to take action. But until you can develop um, and have your own opinion, I would really hold back from listening to anybody else because again, that's not based off of your opinion, that's based off of someone else. So, so blocking out the noise made me a better trader. Yeah, 100%. So for all those that are like, oh, this thing is going up 100%, or look, if you wanna grow your account 10% a day, trust me, if they're making that much money, they wouldn't be dedicating so much time to like um, trying to like help you and not not help you make money, but telling you to trade the same thing that they're trading. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't help you, right? But when you see people that are trying to be like, no, look, this thing made me this much money, you should invest in it as well. Like what's their edge? What's their benefit um, of, of teaching that, right? Or, or showcasing that, especially like, I hope you guys know, but telling people what to trade is not something that, should be like, you know, um, I, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that anybody can make, regardless if you make money or not. Um, if you listen to other people, uh, when it comes down to trading and you're solely trading based off other people's opinion, you're, you're most likely gonna fall under that 90% category where you lose money in the market long term. Yeah, you might get lucky from time to time, but trust me, this isn't a market where, you know, luck lasts a very long time, so. So what you're saying is buy you guys. Nope, not at all. Here we go, forward slash NG. Uh, CL is still descending. So love your videos, Ricky. You are my, uh, what? Oh, that's so cool. Brad is a new hero. He says Ricky is the man. He loves that you're a <laughs> That's so cool. Appreciate that. And thank uh, or I appreciate that, Jessica. Thank you. Uh, is it true that you can make uh, so much money uh, day trading eventually you can branch off into other again John you can make money off of anything that's a very like big like elementary question to ask can you make money can you make a lot of money doing selling potato chips yeah there's people that are you know billionaires that have potato chip factories again it depends on your approach uh, you can make money off of everything it's it's how you approach it um, can you branch off to other things of course Right? Is day trading the only thing that I do? No, it's something that I do for about two to three hours in the morning. And for the rest of the day, I focus on our other businesses or our other investments. Right now, one of the things that we're working on are the you know hard money loans. So funding those and, and kind of going that route. So Uh, do you have a mentor as a be, uh, beginning trader or ever? No, um, never had anyone to guide me or anything of that sort. I mean, I think that's why it took so long um, for me to like that, that self-taught process. Um, I have people now. <coughs> oh, one second. Um. I have people now in different markets, right? So like when it comes down to like hard money loans and stuff like that um, in real estate, I have people like, you know, Harley who guide me and, and give me advice on that or people like Lenny um, who have experience that can better guide me, right? So if you would view that as a mentor, but I don't have one specific person that I sit down with and try to like learn everything from. I, I'm a huge believer in learning from experience and um, you know, that calculated uh, risk. So, yeah. All righty. Uh, can you imagine working as an employee sometime? Of course, I was working a normal job until 22. So about two years ago, I had a normal, that's how I qualified for my house. I think that's something that a lot of people don't know is like, they see me now and they see what I have. And even people that I've talked to, um, that I know personally, they think that I've never had a normal job or anything of that sort. I was, I always talk about it. If you're part of LPP and you're part of LPP uh, from the very beginning, um, especially like TechBot Solutions, 
I would always talk that I'm at work. I would, I would always say that I'm at work um, and talk about what I do. I would try to empower people that you know having a normal job isn't a bad thing. It's, it, it builds stability. Um, and if you can build that stable income and you enjoy your job and you can work twice and three times as hard and day trade, work your normal job and do a series of different things as in like for me, it was investing in cars and investing in real estate and then investing in the stock market and then ultimately having that normal job and I was a student at, at the same time. So I was juggling a different a series of different things, but I enjoyed it. Again, guys, I, I like uh, we'll, we'll close out the video here, but one of the things that I want to end this with is like, you know, if you are really, and, and this is for everybody, we have a lot of people that are, you can tell, be based off of their questions, um, is, you know, they're, they're very like, very beginner focused, right? Um, I, I think at the end of the day, if you're really just getting into the market solely for the money and you don't enjoy the market in any way, and it's just, you know, you're, you're just like money focused, I, I just don't, yeah, it might work out for you. Again, I don't like to limit or discourage people, but ultimately, I think that you have to have somewhat of an interest or a passion for these creative markets because in the very beginning, the monetary reward is not going to be there. You have to enjoy, I, I, I love these messages and, and some people like, I, I don't even post them from time to time because people just like don't get it. Uh, but when I get people that message me that like, I actually got a message about two days ago uh, from one of our members within the Learn Plan Profit saying that like, um, they enrolled, um, they're learning a lot and, you know, they know that it's going to take time for them to even be able to, you know, get a decent return consistently because it's not just getting lucky, but it's consistently getting a, a, a decent return um, and that he's super excited to just for this whole journey, this, this learning experience. And I think that's really that mindset is really what differentiates those that will be successful and those that don't. If you're really just trying to get in this market for the money, you have no passion, you have no interest in this market, and it's just like, and, and you'll see, look, keep an eye out. There, there's all these like entrepreneurs that will be like, or investors, right? They'll be like, oh, I'm Forex, crypto, all these different things. Trust me, I think that there's people that can, you know, successfully carry and invest in all those different markets. But when you're not successful in any of those markets and you just dabble in those markets, it's just like, why not build that one big piece of pie? Why not have a primary focus in which you actually excel in? Uh, people are just all over the place. They're very disorganized um, and it's just very it's functional. It, it just doesn't make sense. And again, if you're getting into this market solely because of the money and you think you're gonna make money quick and all that stuff, it's just like be real with yourself. There's a 90% failure rate in this market and it's probably because people have a mindset like that. Um, you know, if you really are empowered and you have interest in this market and you wanna spend time with people that will, you know, motivate you and invest in different markets, that's what it's all about. Like learning together as a team, implementing what it is that you do, empowering one another, and trying to see if there's any way to work with one another. People always ask me, how did you build your team with TechBot Solutions? Justin, right? Caleb, Weston, Harley, they were all members of TechBot Solutions. I did, they're not my high school friends, they're not my childhood friends, they weren't my school friends. They're all friends that I made through TechBot Solutions, which then I partnered up with them and then we built like you know these little businesses together. It, it's working with people that you value. And I think that's what's most important. Weston coming all the way from Arkansas, right? We have, we have, I have two of my cousins that moved from California to Arizona because we work well together. At the end of the day, it's about enjoying the experience and making sure that you surround yourself with people that empower you. Um, when it comes down to making money, it's just, you know, it's part of the game. But it, it's a true blessing to be able to, you know, not just make a decent amount of money when it comes down to trading, uh, but really like, you know, not needing a vacation from what it is that I do on an everyday basis. I think that's really what differentiates, you know, why I do this every single day. It's because I enjoy it. And, you know, regardless if I, you know, like this week, probably going to clear $10,000, right? And, you know, regardless if it was $10,000 or $2,000, I would be as motivated to come back every single morning because, you know, I enjoy it. And I think that's what's most important. So um, I do want to remind you that if you guys haven't, um, you guys can refresh this page. You guys can scroll all the way down. Um, I have a little, um, 
you know, surprise and gift for you guys for tuning in and for your time. It's $75 off. Uh, we've been live for about 50 minutes. Um, this live trading session, uh, you saw me take a loss. You saw the mistake that I made. I managed my risk. I came back and then made a profit um, and then came out on top, right? So I had a lot of fun trading with you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. This is something that we do every single day, Monday through Friday within the Learn Plan Profit Group. And then again, um, you know, it's, it's uh, gonna be, you know, when you refresh the page all the way down in the description, it's gonna be $75 off. If you guys want it, great. If you don't or don't feel that you're ready, then no worries, no rush. Again, we have nothing but time. And if you have any questions about, you know, what you experienced today, just direct message me on um, Discord. But if, if it's any trading relating questions, please don't message me on Instagram. Please don't message me on Facebook. Just message me on Discord. So um, yeah, appreciate your guys' time. Uh, thank you, Ricky. I uh, love you and your mindset. Appreciate that, Nico. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, $75 off is the best price I've seen. Yeah, it's the biggest discount that we give. So it'll be open for the next 24 hours. So if you want to take advantage of it, great. We really do appreciate you guys' time. Hope you guys can utilize this weekend to learn something new. And I just want to leave you guys with a very simple message that, again, it's very small, little best practices that you implement today that can lead to big results in the future. So uh, let's just make sure that we, you know, ultimately just end the week on a green note. Thank you guys again time. Hope we earned your thumbs up in this video. Like always, continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be a judge of success. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy.